Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. We are doing a mix of um, Valentine's and Winter's uh, Winter day DIYs today. This is part of the Just Our Imagination um, collaborative challenge for January. And we have Kathy Joe of Kathy Joe DIYs and Brenda of Rustic Lace Events, or Rustic and Lace DIY, sorry. Um, as our host and Lolly D's creations is our guest host. So to start off today, I am making a Valentine's sandwich cookie um, that we will be, that, you know, it, it can be used in a, you know, floral arrangement or you can put it in like a little um, bucket or pot or whatever to, um, to display. The, the use for it is up to your imagination. Um, however, I may end up doing like a floral arrangement and putting it in there. But for right now, this is what we've got. So I started off with two, um, two little small rounds. And unfortunately, I don't have the measurements for them. And part of our challenge uh, we had to use the uh, caulking from Dollar Tree. That was one of the items. And we had to use a dowel and we had to use twine. Those are must use um, items in that. So what I did was I took some of the Dollar Tree caulking and mixed it with a little bit of the, the red paint to make it a, a pink color. And I am using this as, to create quote unquote frosting on my cookie. So I gone around and, and just try to make sure that there's like some texture in there where it looks like somebody frosted the cookie. As you can see here. And then I will be basically making a sandwich cookie with um, using the wooden dowel as a stand. So just keep watching and we'll get to get to the rest of it after I get done painting here. If you enjoy watching our uh, DIY videos, please uh, like, subscribe, comment and share. When you hit the uh, subscribe button, don't forget to hit the notification bell and choose the option for how you want to be notified. So here um, is where I'm adding the dowel. And you can see that I put a tumbling tower block on the back of uh, one of these. I had originally started out with it on the back of both of them and then um, decided I only needed the one. So I'm reinforcing this with some hot glue and these little rounds that I have, um, I, I don't remember where I got them, but they look like they were used and tried, you know, like somebody had tried to glue them on top of something. So there's like a little ridge of glue or something there, as you can kind of see in, you know, from the side view. So what I'm doing is I don't want to have to use that much caulk where I put it, you know, fill the entire inside of the cookie with it. So I took a strip of um, paper and I'm gluing it around on the inside of that little ledge that was um, that was on these from the glue so that I just have to, to do like the outside and not have to fill the entire thing with the caulking. There's no sense in wasting, um, wasting all of that. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm taking and, and running the hot glue along that little lip and placing the paper down in there.
So as many of you may know, if you follow me, um, I live in Tennessee and we're fixing to get hit with some really cold and some snow and, and all of that. It's uh, not going to be a fun week, <laughs> so to speak. So how's, how, how is your weather forecast for where you're at for the next week? I know that it looks like the entire country is about to get slammed with um, snow. Some have already started getting slammed with snow and cold weather. So leave it in the comments below. Let me know where you're at and what your weather forecast is like. I'm curious to know. So with this, I'm taking and um, I ran a little dab of hot glue along the 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 little ridge on the second uh, half of this and then now I'm just going around the, the whole thing um, to get it glued sorry that I'm a little out, I was a little out of frame I fixed it <laughs> um, the glue won't show because that's where we're gonna put our caulking so never fear um, I just wanted to make sure that we had it that it was good and um, put together before I went in and here I'm going in with the caulking so that makes it look like there's frosting in between make it look like a sandwich cookie with some frosting in there I go around the entire thing this way <clears throat> now something that I I did off camera um, it just when I finished this up I still wasn't a hundred percent it was missing something and I couldn't figure out what it was missing and when it hit me I was like oh ah, I got it and I just went and did it and didn't think to turn on the camera to, to film it um, but off camera I had taken and added a twine bow um, at the base of the the cookie on the little stem there and then I had also taken and I had some little hearts uh, heart stickers that I um, put on there which you'll see in the photos um, and whatnot from the final the video of the final reveal um, I also did the had an afterthought with the second project too and that hit me I, I did that at the same time off camera of course but I'll get into that when I'm when we're on that DIY so it takes this caulking about at least two hours to start setting up um, I went ahead and I had done this um, at night and I just I popped it in a coffee cup where it was standing up where uh, overnight so that I could get it good and, and set so I didn't risk messing it up so now I'm back. Um, I'm adding some Mod Podge to it so that I can sprinkle it with glitter to make it look like sugar sprinkles on there. I just put a thin layer, nothing, you know, nothing major, just a thin layer on there, and then sprinkled some of the this pink glitter on there. Just to give it a little bit of pizzazz. Most of my Valentine crafting supplies are still in my shed, so I'm improvising um, with what I had, what I could find to to add on here. So it's just way too cold to go dig in my shed for my supplies at the moment maybe in the next after next week it'll warm up enough where I can go dig and pull that bin out where I can get some of my Valentine's uh, supplies I am determined this year to craft primarily from my stash because well my stash is crazy it, it's with Sweet Tea and Butterflies, it's me and my partner, Dee Dee, and both of us oftentimes will go into a store and if we find something on clearance, we'll pick it up because we know we'll use it eventually. And if we can get it cheaper, 
all the better. So here's the, the guidelines for this. Um, you have to use caulk, twine, and a dowel, a wooden dowel, which I used the caulking and the wooden dowel in the first DIY. On to DIY number two. I gotten, um, actually Dee Dee, um, found these and got them, um, I'm having a harder time reining her in on the craft from the stash thing, but we hadn't been able to find any of these mittens and there were, um, several DIYs last year that I wanted to do with them. So when she saw them, she went ahead and picked them up. Um, it, if you saw my craft stash, I've got a 10 by, uh, eight by 10 building that is full front to back, top to bottom with bins of craft supplies. So I'm counting on y'all to help hold me to that crafting from my stash. And I definitely need to do a lot more crafting this year so that I can use some of that up and, and have some finished product. So what I'm doing with this, this mitten, um, is I am going to cover it with this denim fabric. So I took a piece of paper, traced out the mitten, and then I cut it about a quarter of an inch outside of where I drew that line so that I could, um, when I cut the fabric out, it was not the exact size of the mitten uh, plaque. In hindsight, um, I probably should have done a little bit wider than that. And, um, the technique I used to apply it, I probably, um, I would have done differently as well. But I took and, uh, cut the fabric out in the shape that I needed and went and ironed the, the wrinkles out of it. We invite you to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. We also have our own um, group crafting page um, for posting and sharing, you know, craft ideas, projects, and all of that on our website. So go. Uh, I invite you to go check that out and become a member. All of those links will be in the description box below. as will the, the link for the, uh, the playlist for this challenge so that you can go check out all of the other, um, all of the other ladies creations for this challenge. Um, I really enjoy doing these challenges cause it pushes me outside of my comfort zone and, uh, makes me think outside of the box sometimes. So, I, I kind of have fun with that. Um, it, it's, and, and it's a great group of ladies too. You know, we chat amongst our, you know, ourselves and, or amongst each other and everything. Um, you know, and, and Kathy Joe's a hoot. Just, uh, you know, you definitely, you definitely want to follow Kathy Joe and watch her videos. She is so funny. And all of the, the, all of the ladies in the challenges are very creative, very talented. So please, please go check out the playlist and, you know, like, subscribe, follow, share their videos as well. So here I am taking, and I was trying to, to do this where I didn't have a rough edge on the, the, side of it, if that makes any sense. So I was kind of folding it over and, and attaching it, um, cause I intend to stuff it. So in hindsight, because I used twine to outline it, I don't know why I didn't think about it, but I could have just wrapped all of this and glued it around the, on the back. Um, cause the twine would have covered, you know, covered that up. Um, but I didn't, I did it the hard way. So it is what it is. 
Did it come out absolutely perfect? No, but I still think it's adorable and I like it. So, live and learn. I don't do a whole lot with with fabric. I don't sew. Um, and I, I haven't to date done a whole lot of um, DIYs with fabric in them. So, it's a learning curve. Um, you know, as I got about halfway through this is when it dawned on me that Oh, well, I could have wrapped it around and, and glued it on the back, but I wasn't going to pull it all up and start all over again. So I just went with it. Sometimes that's just how we, how we have to uh, flow is just go with it. Make the best of it. So this was uh, <clears throat> this was definitely a little bit of a challenge trying to get this uh, denim on here. <coughs> Pardon me, but I did manage to finally get it all on there and um, got it stuffed. It's just a little bit of. Um, a little bit of time consuming work there to kind of fold it over and, and get it all situated. I was, uh, as I was doing it, the more I put it on there, the more crooked the top part got. So that was bugging the heck out of me, but I fixed it in the end. So to uh, stuff this, um, I've got a, a, what was it, maybe a $2 pillow from Dollar General that, um, that I used to, for stuffing when I need it. I just took, broke off several little clumps of it and just kind of stuck it in there. Now I am trying to fix that top so that it's straight because it was bugging me. It was really bugging me. Just took a little bit of hot glue, ran it along there. I ended up having to it back up a little bit because I realized that top corner there where my hands just were I couldn't get the maneuver the stuffing back up in there so I pulled it back and stuffed a little bit more in in that one little spot and then glued it back down
first I decided to try to poke it in there with something and I was just poking through it. Ended up just picking it up and using my fingers to get it in there. I was trying not to lift any more of it up than I had to to get that shoved in there. But I got it. Now we have like a, a little mitten that looks like it, you know, because most mittens aren't just, you know, flat. They've got a little bit of bulk to them. So I kind of, that's what I was going for here is trying to give it a little bit of a, a look of the, the bulk of most mittens because even if they're knit, you've got a little bit of bulk in there. It's not just flat looking. So here I am outlining it with the twine. And this is where it really hit home that I could have wrapped it around and probably saved myself some time there. It probably would not have taken me near as long to attach it at the back side instead of trying to fold it and attach it along the front. But live and learn. That's part of what uh, comes with DIYing and crafting. Of course I'm sitting there battling with the, the glue on my fingers. Drives me crazy. So here um, I'm taking and running the, the twine and wrapping it around the, the top there. I just go round and round. Um, the first layer or the first line of it, I went ahead and glued all the way across so that I knew I had that good and sealed where the um, fabric was and then here I'm just taking and wrapping um, and gluing it just a little bit on the end there as I go so this particular um, DIY idea was um, 
inspired by a fellow YouTube creator, um, one of my favorites uh, that I follow. Uh, her name's Kelly Barlow. She does some awesome, you know, DIY projects and whatnot. Um, and she really, she likes the, the more rustic feel and whatnot. Um, most of her projects have twine in it in some shape or form. Um, I've been lately watching a lot of her videos. Her son has been battling cancer for about a year now. Uh, and they found out not too long ago that all of the chemotherapy and the surgeries and whatnot, um, that it didn't work. So she's been caring for her son, but YouTube is her, her income. That is her job. She, you know, normally posts several times a week on, you know, with DIYs. She's been taking some time off focusing on taking care of her son and, um, and whatnot. So I've been going back and watching a bunch of her videos. Um, as long as she gets play hours on there, as long as people are watching, then she still has income coming in from it. So I've been watching as many of her videos as I can, trying to help, you know, keep her in the rankings where she can focus on, on taking care of her family. Uh, she literally just 10 minutes ago, posted um, the memorial video. So her son lost his battle on the night. Why am I getting so emotional? Uh, probably because I'm a mama and I, I can kind of relate with, you know, I can sort of relate, but not. <laughs> I can just imagine what I would feel like if I was going through this. So this, um, I took inspiration from several of the videos that I've been watching of hers for this DIY. So she, you know, she's, she's just a, normally a very upbeat, positive person. Um, I, I absolutely adore watching her videos. Um, She's very creative and talented. So if y'all, um, if you want to help support her and get some great DIY tips, please go follow her channel. I'll put the link in the description box. Um, watch as many of the videos as you can, you know, here and there. I usually watch two or three of them in the morning before I go to work so that, you know, she, so that she gets some playtime in there where um, she still has income coming in. So this particular one, the embellishment I did is um, kind of a, a nod to her. Um, she always puts either a twine bow or a twine flower. Um, almost always. I won't say always, but almost always incorporates a twine bow or a twine flower into her DIYs. So the embellishments that I used on this particular project is a, a nod to, to her and, you know, just trying to show some support there. And here I'm trying to burn off some of the, the fuzzies from the twine got to be really careful when you're doing this. Just kind of float the lighter a little bit over it um, so that it hits just those little wispy fuzzies on there. And this one here on the back I'm taking and um, just kind of securing those in the back a little bit too so that they don't move and loosen up the ones on the front. So here um, I'm making a a twine bow and um, I had said earlier that I had an afterthought um, and added stuff off video 
Um, with this one, I just uh, added a snowflake in the middle of the, the little twine flower that I made. I just added one of those little laser cut snowflakes on there. Um, my intention was to add a button, but I couldn't find my buttons. So I winged it and threw a little snowflake in there, which is fitting considering it's a mitten. And I guess probably also because we're just uh, here in Tennessee, we're dreadfully awaiting <laughs> the snow. Uh, we're not equipped here in my part of Tennessee for lots of snow and we don't get it very often. So it makes it a little bit challenging when we do get a decent amount of snow. Um, Cause we don't have the, you know, we don't have the equipment and the, the road crews to go out and, and uh, plow and, and all of that, like other areas that get snow a lot do. So chances are I am probably working from home tomorrow. Um, my, my day job is I'm a paralegal um, and I have the coolest boss ever because on days like tomorrow <laughs> where we're going to have snow on the ground, um, I'm able to work from home and she has no problem with that. So I will probably be working from home. Truth be told, I actually get more done when I'm working from home because I don't have constant interruptions of the phone ringing and having to go down rabbit holes and all that good stuff. Um, I actually can complete a, you know, if I'm drafting a document or whatever I'm doing, I can actually get it completed when I work from home. So I'm kind of uh, looking forward to being able to be productive tomorrow, more productive than I usually am when I'm in the office. So here I'm placing that little uh, twine flower on there. And then I took the original little bow that was on the, the plaque and put it on there as well. It's a little bit lighter color twine than what uh, I wrapped it with. So it still kind of stands out. It doesn't blend in too much. And here's the final reveal. There's the little hearts in the, the bow that I added to the to the little sandwich cookie. I think that's I think that turned out absolutely adorable. And then there's where I added the little snowflake on there. Sorry about the angle there. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Please don't forget to go check out uh, Kelly's channel and show her a little bit of love and support during this difficult time. Our hearts definitely go out to you, Kelly. <laughs>